Now we're joined by head coach Phil Neville. Uh, morning, guys. Uh, so in, in terms of uh, the squad, etc., cetera, we've, we've got some uh, boys that are going to be out a little bit longer. Uh, your Joe Marsman, Jovin Jones, Ryan Saylor. Uh, Mr. Robbie, Robinson. Robbie Robinson. Yeah, Robbie Robinson. They're, they're, those guys are going to take probably another, uh, you know, few weeks few weeks the boy the boys now that are out on the training field uh running around uh are Escona who trained with the MLS2 team today because we just wanted him to just you know that the boy is that hungry that he would just go you know 100 miles an hour first day so we just we just protected him a little bit today Bryce Duke was out on the training field today uh Gibbs. Kieran Gibbs out on the training field today yeah really keen to be back in uh, ASAP and with his experience and his age, you think that, you know, we have a return to play process. You think that he'd be able to skip a few stages because of his experience, because he knows his body. The 17-year-olds and the 20-year-old, they don't really necessarily know their body. And when they're coming back off sort of like muscle injuries, we've just got to be extra cautious. But I think we've been very cautious with Duke, with Bryce and with Escona. And I think they're now ready to be, or they're close to being back with the team to be competing for a place. Uh, Gibbs, I expect to be back in the next three or four days as well. So, uh, Damien Lowe, Damien Lowe uh, got, a, got a slight knock on Saturday. Uh, he, he was jogging with the physios today, uh, which was a real, with it being a Sunday game, it gives him an, an extra day to recover. So, we, we we're really confident that uh, he'll be okay for Friday training uh, or, or Saturday training. Yeah, and, and, then, and then we're looking forward to the game in Austin, which is uh, a new a new place for us to go as a franchise. Uh, I think that I think they're an outstanding team. I've got to say, I've watched them. They, they played Chicago the week before we played Chicago. So we watched a lot of them. Uh, they had an outstanding result against Cincinnati. They play a really good fluid formation. And, uh, you know, they've invested and recruited really well in their team. And uh, I think it's going to be a really, really difficult game. It's our first road trip uh, of the season. So in terms of sort of like our mentality and, and what we want, the clean sheets that we got against Chicago, uh, I think gives us great confidence. And, and we're, go we're going to build on that, that this, this team over the last two years hasn't had that many clean sheets. And we, and we want to be really hard to beat. And, and with our goalkeeper, who was outstanding, and the whole of the team's mentality, we, were, we kept a clean sheet against Chicago. So we need the same against Austin. All right, we'll get started with questions. We'll go with Lauren Marquith on the on the Zoom, and then Michelle. Thanks, Rafa. Hi, Phil. Hello. You kind Lauren. of just kind of just mentioned it, but talking about clean sheets, starting off the season with a clean sheet. What did you see defensively from Saturday's match from the front line, Gonzalo going in for those slide tackles all the way to the back line? You know, Yedlin getting stuck in. Well, the defending does does uh, start from the front with the centre forward, Campagna, Lassiter, Gonzalo. Uh, it starts from them. Uh, but I always think there's, there's, there's a time during uh, there's a time during a game where you need your goalkeeper to to really save you. And I think on Saturday, Diop made three brilliant saves that kept us in the game in periods. Uh, and I, and I suppose their keeper did the same for for them. So uh, you can defend uh, with discipline. You can defend with concentration, which we did every time. Every time they had a set play, which they had a lot of set plays. Because I was disappointed with our discipline in terms of giving away set plays. We look really solid and really disciplined, and we've worked really hard at that. And uh, you know, we've we've challenged them a lot on their defending as a team, and defending as a unit. And uh, I was really pleased with that. And I've, I have been all preseason. We've got a different type of defenders now in the football club, and uh, they're the type of defenders that I like. They want to defend and they get get great pride in their clean sheet and they get great pride in throwing themselves in front of the ball. They get great pride in working together as a team. And uh, that that's the type of defender that we brought into the, into the club. Next question, Michelle, then Franco. <laughs> not, not for the first time, Michelle, this is it. Uh, first question is about Robert Taylor. We're going to talk to him. Yeah. Uh, what does he bring the team? Can you just sort of describe what you've seen in him, what you like about him? The second part is just, um, we didn't get to ask you this the other night, but um, when you're talking about Diop and the job that he did, at the very end there in the final seconds, he, you know, he kind of stalled a little yeah. and rolled the ball around, and, and Gonzalo was like waving for the ball. And 
And Clement explained to us that as a goalkeeper, he understands that Gonzalo wanted to score, but as a goalkeeper, he wanted not to lose at that point. Yeah. Can you just talk about what your what your thought was about that play? Yeah, I was I was a little bit I was a bit 50-50. I was a little bit Diop and a little bit Gonzalo. And uh and, and what, what I always ask of my players, because we work a lot on scenarios and game management, is that they've got to take ownership. And we had a goalkeeper with great experience that took ownership of that situation. He probably realised that uh, the amount of saves that he had to make and the amount of saves that the other keeper had to make, that it was probably going to be one of those games. Uh, and and you have Gonzalo, who who wants to win a game of football. So you, I could see both sides. And I think in the end, he made the right decision. He made the right call because uh, literally there's only 30 seconds left in the game. Uh, that's what we've asked them to do, to take accountability in the pressure moments, last 10 minutes of the game. So I was really pleased with that. Uh, the first part of your question, Robert Taylor. Uh, Robert Taylor, uh, we saw play for his club in, in Norway, Bran, uh, playing off the left-hand side, got great quality. Uh, we spoke to him on the phone and uh, on Zoom, and, and we had we had a really good chat. And he, he's so hungry, and and he's hungry because he had he had a he had a move, and he was really honest about it. He had a move to Greece early in his career, and he just found it. You know, moving away from home, going to a big club in in Athens was was a big step for him. And he says, "I I have something to prove," and I love that. And then when when we uh, when we were obviously bidding for him, it, it was a real hard negotiation with his club, they wanted top, top uh, dollar for him. And uh, he kept pushing and he kept calling, he kept messaging, he kept pushing, he kept calling, he kept messaging. And 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 I said to Chris, I said, Chris, we have to find a way of getting this boy in this football club, even if, even if, uh, even, if uh, even if we can't at this moment in time. So uh, we went, we went and, and, and put our money where our mouth was because of his attitude and his hunger to, to come here and succeed. And, what we've seen in the, you know, he came here just to visit and then he had to go back for his visa. Uh, he's an outstandingly talented player who is probably four weeks behind everybody else physically. Technically, he's, he's, he's phenomenal. But, you know, on Saturday, the last five minutes of the game, he landed on Thursday night at nine o'clock and uh, he trained Friday morning for 20 minutes. The last five minutes of the game, he could not breathe. He was literally like out of breath. So the heat, the humidity and everything has to go into it. Then we trained him really hard the last three or four days. And, and there, he's still still got to get that base fitness. So I'd say that the next two or three weeks, he's going to have to be really patient. And he's not going to like that because even in the negotiations, he didn't show that quality of patience. <laughs> so, but we know we've got a really good player in our hands who's going to be... Uh, uh, a fantastic addition to our creative side of our game and the connection that he has with Gonzalo in training is already, I think, sensational. Next question, Franco, then Jose. Yeah. How do you get someone like him a little bit more involved well I, I think we didn't get him on the ball in the first half because we didn't have control through our back three our back three didn't control the game like we wanted them to they, they, they were uh, they pressed and 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 with it being a big occasion I thought we just didn't show the composure as a group really uh second half when we settled down I felt as if he grew into the game and he was a big influence with his and, and what he has the ability just to slow the game down and compose himself when everybody else is running at 100 miles an hour. He just has that ability just to put his foot on the ball. And, uh, you know, I think I think one thing that nobody talks about is the amount of balls that he wins because of his low sense of gravity. He gets underneath people. He wins the ball back. His first pass is always looking to play forward into Campania, to, into Igwe and Lassiter. So... Uh, and and uh, we're really, really pleased with him. Really pleased with him. We know he's going to be a, a big influence for us. Him and Gregory are like brothers around around the whole of the training facility. And uh, his, his personality and character is everything that we want. We, we feel as if we've got a real bargain. Yeah, we'll go to the next question, Jose, then Steve. Um, Hmm. Um, you said on, on Lassiter, you know, 
alongside going a step to a work in progress. And I just have to like I mentioned earlier. Within your system, where do you think you can be more effective? Yeah, well, I think I have a brilliant problem with Lasseter and Campania because I think Lasseter has been one of our best players in, in pre-season. He, he, so, he was so disappointed, but he was so unlucky not to start the game against Chicago. Uh, Campania, I've just got a special feeling about, I think he's going to be a top player. I think he's going to be a real top player. So we've got players there that, and I think, I think, I think the way is that there's going to be some games that will suit Campania. There's going to be some games that will suit Ariel. And, and maybe times uh, all three might have to play with Gonzalo as well. So, and we're working on that. So we've, we've got a really good, we've got really good depth. Then throw Robbie Robinson into that. We've, we've got real depth in the centre forward position and real, and they're all different. Robbie can carry the ball. Campania's got the physical ability to bring people into play. And last has got the, the skill uh, and the speed to, to, to play on the counter attack. So we've got three different types of strikers to play with, with Gonzalo. So we're going to have to find we're going to have to find solutions to get sometimes them all in the team. Uh, in terms of Emerson, Emerson's a slow burner. We're just going to have to be patient with the boy. He's he's come he's come to this place, uh, and uh, he he's young. He's is he's, he's in experience. He's, in, he's slightly immature in terms of sort of like his his experience in, in in football. But but there's things he does in training that are absolutely mind blowing. You know, but it's just getting the consistency, consistency to his play. There was a boy that went to Portland last year, Santi Moreno, who it took him six to seven months to get adapted to the MLS. I think it's going to take Emerson the same amount of period, and we've got to give him that time. We can't just throw him into the deep end because that you know you think about the growth, uh, the growth, his development, similar to Noah Allen. Uh, you've got to bring them in and out. And uh, he's one that's a big part of the future, but it's months in time is going to have to be patient and 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 get a real understanding of his tactical position, tactical discipline, tactical awareness, and then his consistency in his play, uh, you know, but over the next two or three weeks, I'm sure you'll see him enter the field at some point. We'll do the last three, Steve, then Austin, then we have Mike. Sorry, sorry, there's a question about the squad. When you were speaking to David and all day after the match, were they, they sort of shared a sense when they felt that they were kind of using like a reboot? Yeah, there, there was a. I think there was a real nervousness from everybody in the place because I think we knew what we we knew what we had, but there was a little bit of the unknown. We had nine debuts. We've got kids that we got young players on the bench. We just didn't know how they were going to react, and they reacted exactly the way that I thought they would. And that was a little bit nervous and tense in the first forty-five minutes, and then in the second half, I think I said to him that we spoke after the game about. They never give in. They kept running. I think the team last year would have won, would have lost that game last year because because uh, they weren't a team. So so by the end of the game, you could see sort of like these these this this young energetic team get more confidence and more confidence. And we're going to have that in the first probably six weeks of the season. Uh, but they were they were excited because. And I make comparisons for Christian McCoon last year with, with Kintiros, say, for instance, is that Christian McCoon, when he came back for preseason last year, nobody, nobody could predict what his growth would be throughout the season. And, and, and we, we feel this exactly the same, if not more, about Kintiros. Well, at the start of the season, there were some rocky moments for Christian McCoon. Uh, but the more we invested in, the more that we give him time, and we're going we're gonna to go with these kids, uh, the, the better they got. And... Uh, you know, I think you'll see week in, week out, you'll see, you'll see more consistency uh, and, and you'll see these boys getting better and better and getting used to playing. I said to him on Saturday, you, you, you're now in the big boys league. You now got to perform week in, week out. Now it's a results business. Now it's a results business where, where results and wins matter. And, uh, you know, Jorge, Jose, David, they want to win. And we speak all the time about youth development, but they want to win. Well, they want to win. And they want to produce young players as well at the same time. And that's the challenge for me. And that's why they put so much faith in me. We'll do the last two questions. Austin, and then Mike. Yeah. What kind of weapon is that? Well, I think that's what that's what we we speak a lot about to the team is that when we name a sixteen now because there's five subs, so so 
the 16 players all have a job to do at some point in that game. And, and for Ari on Saturday, it was to come on for 30 minutes. And when the game got stretched, think about Breck Shea's impact when he came on. If it had been roles reversed, I think you would have seen a lot more forward, more thinking from Noah because the game opened up. There was more spaces. There was more control. The, the game became transitional. So there's certain players that suit that. Now, now players will just have to accept that they will all get opportunities, but they'll all get opportunities of, of, of when I want to give them those opportunities in the right moment of the right game. And, and we're like, we have players like Harry, like Noah, like who, who at times will be on the bench coming on or, or, or vice versa. And I think, I think that's my job as a coach is to pick the right formula to win the game with, with what the game is going to present to us. Last question, Mike Di Pasquale. Thank you, Ralph. Hello, Phil. Uh, you had mentioned that the boys were a little nervous in the first half, and in the second half, there was more of a jump. Do you want to see that right out of the gate this weekend against Austin, a team that a little momentum for those guys that come off a 5 0 win against uh, Cincinnati in their opener? Well, it's, it's a different kind of pressure this weekend because we're away from home. We, we haven't got. Uh, you know, we haven't got La Familia behind us. We haven't, we, we, you know, you think about the old occasion on Saturday felt like a really big occasion on, on, uh, at the weekend, we're going to somebody else's ground. We, we've got a small amount of supporters going, but the pressure is going to be on Austin to, to, to win the game. The pressure is going to be on Austin for their supporters to replicate what they did last week, which was fantastic. So, so our players will be under a different type of pressure in terms of sort of like the expectation from outside of the camp, uh, I, I, I've said it from day one that this club is 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 different. You know, when 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 David came in the day before and met everybody probably for the first time uh, face to face, that that was a big moment for a lot of these players. He's their he's their icon. He's their idol, and uh, him just being around and the ownership being around, and then the you know the pink, the new pink strip which which looked incredible. Uh, the, the the confetti before the game, everything everything was just. Uh, Everything was just different to what they've had in preseason, so it was like it was like welcome to Inter Miami. So I expect next week against LAFC, I expect us to be able to handle that because they've experienced it. Uh, but it's something we need to get used to. And this weekend, we, we we're coming up against a team that that have fantastic supporters in their own stadium. They've created a little bit of a, the, you know, a, a siege mentality there. They've got their own branding, and we're gonna, we're going to have to be better. Uh, we're going to have to be better than them on the day. Thank you, coach. Thanks, guys.